I've come to understand that people don't enjoy getting concussions. So naturally what we're building today is a wearable that helps you avoid obstacles and walls and such in a pool. This is part two of three of a mini build series where we're helping disabled people, and this one's for people with vision disabilities so they have a heads up if there's a wall or an obstacle in their path. My initial thinking was something you could just have set up around your pool so you could just jump in any time and it'd warn you of obstacles and such, but this is something that's been coordinated by Hackster where you can actually talk to the people with disabilities on Discord and get feedback. And that painted a pretty clear picture, where it should be something that can work anywhere without setup and provide haptic feedback, which sounds like a wearable to me. And that all makes perfect sense. You'd be able to get into any body of water with no initial setup. You'd be able to get intuitive feedback. So let's go make it. So here's the plan. We'll use two ultrasonic sensors. One faces slightly left and one faces slightly right. If the user encounters an obstacle, this will warn them of what side it's on. Otherwise, if both sensors go off, that means something is in front of them, which will most commonly be the wall. I was initially thinking I would have to use normal ultrasonic sensors with a see-through case, which sounded pretty underwhelming to me, but ultrasonic sensors for underwater purposes exist. And for each sensor will be a little buzzer for haptic feedback. DF Robot makes these and was kind enough to send some my way, so shout out to them. All that's left now is assembly, so assemble. Assemble. There we go. Putting this together was, of course, smooth sailing from start to finish. Why does nothing work? No big deal at all. I am the smartest ever of all time! Alright, very briefly so any fellow nerds out there can get their fix. It seems like using multiple software serials doesn't really work very well, but ESP32s have extra UART, so we're using one of those, and then software serial for the other ultrasonic sensor, which made things run a lot more smoothly, and also ESP32s are a little picky with their pin allocation, but for anyone following along, you just kind of plug it in and run this and it'll work perfect, so there you go. At this point, we're getting readings from the ultrasonic sensors, and they give feedback via these little motors for haptics, so we're looking good. So with that, it's gonna work and do all the basic requirements and all that, but you know we gotta make it fancy. So let's make it fancy. My thinking's that swimming's sort of a higher risk activity, and that's probably particularly true if you have a disability of any kind. So since the user's already wearing a device in this setup, we may as well integrate a nice safety feature. If the user's face down for too long, we'll begin haptic feedback. If they remain face down, we send out an alert. This is routed through blues and is sent to any designated phones as a text message. For my setup, I routed the events to Twilio for the texting. All right, we're doing a quick test to make sure the new hardware setup's working. Ready to go. New hardware, who dis? Money in the bank right there. Shout out Blues for that one. So unless something stupid happens, this should all just work now. So let's find out. Boop. You'd think adding code to send a message to my phone from an Arduino would be harder than setting up an accelerometer, but uh, here we are. All right. So now, I just went through and calibrated things. So we should be able to get real values that will correlate with someone face down and then send a message. Oh no, our user is upside down. This is them, on the bottle cap. What will we do? Someone needs to be notified about this. User is face down. Panic. All right, surely this is the time where everything just works, right? Right, guys? Right? Right? Okay, moment of truth, though. I'm excited. I think it is gonna work. Takes a moment, but then... Alright, let's see if it's sent. Come on. Yes! Yes! Oh, everything is awesome! Please don't hit me with a copyright strike for singing that. All right, last code thing I promised, super fast rundown. So basically what we're doing, we read the distance for the left and right sensor, and the haptic feedback we provide is based on the distance, so it buzzes less frequently and less intensely when you're further, so you can kind of tell where you are relative to whatever it's sensing. We use the accelerometer to see if the user's face down. If they are, we start the timer. After a minute, we start buzzing in case they're just, you know, happily floating face down in the water. Maybe they left it out somewhere, who knows. And if they still don't respond, we send out our message via blues. So now all the electronics are ready to go, which brings us to the enclosure. And I was thinking about it and realizing that I'm essentially just gonna make this. Something that everyone has in their house already. So put a few cheap electronics in here with the code I already wrote for you and voila. Basically anyone can have a haptic swim assistant. So that seems cool to me. I'm gonna use this. All right. 
I feel like there is logic and convenience to it, but if we're being honest, not everyone's going to want to wear modified plastic Tupperware. So I went ahead and modeled the nicer enclosure as part of this project. And while I can already see solutions, there is a glaring flaw of recharging the battery, which this modeled enclosure resolves. It's a remix that combines and alters these models, so shout out to the original creators of those. So now that everything works, it's time to put it in the enclosure and take it for a spin. All right, it's time for a quick sanity test to make sure everything's still cooperating. Nice. Perfect. Time for the real deal, baby. And if you're curious about my level of dedication to this project, I left my pool open, which means I fished about a tree's worth of leaves out of this dang thing. That said, I am not getting in this water. That is way too cold. Plus with all the leaves, it's nightmare colored again. Well, this is cool and all, I definitely should have seen this part coming. How the heck am I supposed to convey haptics to a camera? I have no idea if you can hear anything from there. You can't even really see the lights from here, but they're on. It's doing stuff. Uh, it stopped buzzing because I got it out of the water a bit. I hope you can hear any of this at all. I kind of doubt it. All right, I'm going to fall in the pool like this, but whatever, it works. I'm glad I showed off that it works before doing this. Thankfully, there is one aspect that I can realistically demo, which is the safety feature. Let's leave this guy upside down and see if we get an alert. All right, suspense time. Let's see if the event triggers. I'm confident this is going to work. It's gonna work. Cause I don't know what I'm gonna do if it doesn't work, but it should work. All right, come on, work. Yes, it works. Awesome, awesome, yes. So there you go. This little ball of electronics connect like your eyes in the water and be your little haptic swim assistant. Have a good one. If you've made it this far, you probably enjoy this content to some degree and should probably click these buttons down here to, you know, make sure they work and stuff. And also, you may enjoy this video here. It's similar to the one you just watched. Have a good one.